What would you do if somebody just handed you $1,500? I mean, just right out of the blue, say it just dropped from the sky and somebody said, here you go, here's 1500 bucks. Would that help? Would that be enough to pay off part of your credit card note? Would that be enough to put towards your marketing for your business this month? Or would you spend that on yourself? Honest to goodness, think about this for just a minute. If I was able to hand you $1,500, what would you do with it? A lot of small business owners would say, you know what, Whit? I would put that directly into my marketing. And from the marketing, I would be able to grow my business or at least attract another high paying client so that I could get that $1,500 back. Very smart. Another small business owner told me that she would use it towards her credit card payment. Now, how many of you who are running a small business, a woman owned business, how many of you have pushed that credit card bill to the side maybe once or twice. And a lot of you maybe are thinking, shoot, $1,500 wouldn't cover my eating out expense for the month. But keep thinking with me, ladies. What would $1,500 do in your business? Sometimes it would pay off your credit card note. Sometimes maybe you could chip it in on your building rent. I know in my area of the world, in Knoxville, Tennessee, 1500 bucks would pay my building rent for three months. But now if you're in Atlanta, 1500 bucks may cover half a month. I mean, it just depends on where you are, right? <laughs> so maybe it would cover your building rent, but maybe you could put that towards your personal rent. A lot of ladies who own their own business aren't able to go buy their own house. And so instead of trying and fighting against the big banks, they just rent a house. So maybe 1500 bucks would help you rent a house. Maybe that would mean you're living rent free for a month or two. Other ladies say, no way with, if you handed me $1,500, I would put that straight into my savings account because right now my business is fine. My business is rocking and rolling. Yeah, it could be better, but it's been a whole lot worse. I can tell you that. So I would put the $1,500 into savings. Would you do that? If I gave you $1,500, would you spend it or would you save it? And now when you're thinking about your savings and you're thinking about putting this 1500 bucks into savings, are you going to put it in the bank in a savings account? Are you going to put it under the mattress? For a rainy day fund? I know you're not going to tell your husband where you're socking this thing away. So where are you going to save it? How are you going to save it? Also, are you thinking about if you save it, how much is it going to be worth when you go to get it? Yeah, I know. It's a green. It'll be worth 1500 bucks. But in the bank, it could earn some interest, right? Maybe it'll grow to $1,505 which isn't enough to pay for lunch, but you know, it's a little bit of interest. So what would you do with $1,500 if I could hand it over to you right now, today? Because I gotta tell you, if somebody handed me 1,500 bucks, honey, I'd be going on a shopping spree, all right? I've been looking at a new Louis Vuitton PM bag for a while. And if you gave me 1500 bucks, that puppy would be mine, mine, all mine. Or I'd get a new pair of shoes. I'd get a Chanel bag. I'd get a Burberry coat. I'd go, I mean, I'm telling you, if you handed me 1500 bucks, I know exactly that I would go and I would spend it on myself because you know what? I deserve $1,500. I have been working my tail off in this business for years and years and years. And I deserve a little bit of the good life. It's free money. I can do whatever I want to. I don't have to be responsible with it. Okay, probably should. Oh, but that bag is just so pretty. Would that be you? Would you go on a shopping spree if somebody gave you 1500 bucks? 
<laughs> somebody told me they'd pay off their IRS bills. <laughs> and that is the most boring thing that you could do with those $1,500 that I just handed you. But it's okay. Everybody's different. Everybody's got a different plan. Everybody would use those $1,500 in a different way and maybe you're sitting there thinking right now that there's something else that you would do with 1500 bucks i mean please let me know what you would do with 1500 dollars. i've heard a lot of examples but maybe you've got a really good one of what you would do with it but now i gotta tell you that i'm the little real estate girl and if i was gonna hand you 1500 dollars I would really want you to spend that on real estate. What? Whitney, I can't buy real estate for $1,500. You're crazy. What can I buy for $1,500? Well, I know exactly what you could buy for $1,500 because I've done it. I've bought random chunks of land for $1,500 before. I've got one half acre piece of industrial property in the city of Knoxville and in the summer of 2013 I paid 1500 bucks for it. 1536.86. I mean just right over $1500. And it was all mine. Tax tag and title, all in, all done. $1500 and I was a real estate investor. I had a half acre piece of industrial land and I had no idea what to do with it. <laughs> I just knew I needed it. I knew I wanted it. I knew it would come around sometime or another. It would be good for me. So I bought it with no plan, with no strategy, with nothing but a hope and a prayer that it would work. So I was downtown about a month later after I bought it. And I was hanging out at the city county building and flirting with the codes guys. Cause I mean, <laughs> if you're going to go downtown and you're going to be in real estate, you might as well start flirting with those codes guys as early as you can, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so I was talking to them about another property and a different plan and you know, this and that, just kind of filling them out on what they thought I should be doing. And one of the guys looked at me, he said, Hey, Whitney, you said you bought that other piece over there on Prosser Road, didn't you? I said, yes, sir, I did. He said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I don't have a clue. He said, well, do you know that you own more than just that half acre? And I said, I'm listening. What do you, what do you mean there? And he, he continued on to say that what had happened was, if you're looking at my property, I have a half acre on the right side of a driveway. And then on the left side of a driveway, I have a neighbor, okay? There is actually a driveway that splits our property lines. And I, I didn't think anything about it. It was just a driveway to me. When I bought it, I knew the driveway was there. My neighbor uses the driveway. It's not a big deal. It's just a gravel driveway. Well, the codes guy said, no, Whitney, what's really cool about that driveway is that in 1992, that driveway was a road. And since you were on the right side of the road and your neighbor was on the left side of the road, the city decided that they didn't want to keep up this road anymore. So what they did is they deeded you the right side of that driveway and they gave your neighbor the left side of the driveway. I said, hold on, wait a minute. You're saying that my neighbor has been driving on my side of the road since 1992? Scott, the codes inspector, he was like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Every time they have a tire going down the right side of that driveway, they're on your property. I said, well, you've just made my day. Thank you so much. And I left out of there and I went, I hired a surveyor. And sure enough, in 92, I gained an extra, at like 200 square feet of earth. <laughs> and in 92, I was... Eight years old so I, I did not care about this in 92 but fast forward to 2013 and I did care about it okay so I called up my neighbor and my neighbor is a fortune 500 company so it's not like I could just call him up and be like hey Joe what's up no 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 no. I had to call talk to a secretary talk to a secretary talk to a secretary get the run around for a couple days blah 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 email this guy I mean it was like hunting down uh, cats 
trying to get a hold of this Fortune 500 company to see who I needed to talk to. So I finally got somebody out there and told them, explained to them the situation that in 92, I received the right side of this driveway and they received the left side. And they said, oh no, little real estate girl, that's not possible. See, we've been on this property since like 1952 and that never happened. I said, all right, cool. Have your attorney, have your survey, have whoever you need, check it out. And sure enough, y'all, two weeks later, two weeks to the day, I met that big fancy man in his suit out there on my property. He called me back, not his secretary, not his minion, the man in charge called me back and said, hey, how about we rent that property from you for $250 every month? I said, well, let me think about it. I'll call you back. Okay, fine. So I hung up, did a little happy dance because I've got $1,500 in this property and he wants to pay me $250 a month just for the driveway. I'm thinking I've hit a home run. This is going to be amazing. So I get my thoughts together and I call him back and I said, okay, Mr. Fortune 500, you can pay me $250 a month, but I've owned this property and you've been driving on it since the summer and we fiddle farted around and wasted six months of my life here. So I want to be paid back for those other months in back rent. And he said, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Cha-ching. And then I said, but also, since you're the one driving on this driveway, I want you to be responsible for all the maintenance, all the repairs, if it needs some gravel, if it needs to be graded. I mean, whatever happens, if a tree falls on it, I don't care. It's your responsibility to keep it up however you need it. He said, okay, that's fine. And I said, and one more thing, sir. Sir, I would also like you to pay my property taxes every year. He said, well, how much are they? I said, $31.56. <laughs> and he laughed and he said, okay, that's fine, little real estate girl. I will pay your taxes. I will keep up the driveway. I will do whatever it is. And I'm going to pay you the six months back rent since we've been driving on your land. I said, thank you, sir. We signed the paperwork and now every month for the rest of my life, I am going to make $250. I'm not even making it because to make money, you have to do something. All I do is wake up on the 17th of every month and I have $250 extra in my account. So why is this exciting for me? Why is this so wonderful that I want everybody to have a $1,500 chunk of land? Well, most people come to me and they say, hey, uh, as soon as I pay off my primary house, then I'll go get a, a rental portfolio. As soon as my kids graduate college, I'll start becoming a real estate investor. Or I'm going to start flipping houses as soon as I can save up the first $70,000 so I can go buy one. And then I'll just charge all the materials on my credit card. We'll pay it off. We'll sell it. Hopefully we'll make $100,000 and it'll be a good day. And I'm like, no. You don't need a big chunk of change to get started in real estate. You really need $1,500 so that you can become a real estate investor. Okay, because I started this with a $1,500 investment in land. And now I get $250 every month coming into my account. So I, I got to tell you, I'm from a small town outside of Knoxville, Tennessee. It's P-O-W-E-L-L, -L, but we pronounce it PAL, P-A-L. I went to PAL High School and I wasn't really great at math, but I can tell you that if you invest $1,500 and you're getting a $250 return on that money, then in six months, you will have all your money back. If you invest $1,500 and you get $250 back, then in one year from the day uh, you purchase this property, you will have doubled your investment. You will have doubled down on your $1,500. And I would love for you to show me another way to do that in this world. Because if you put that $1,500 that I tried to give you earlier in your savings account or under your mattress, I know, sure as I'm standing here, that that did not double down. If you were thinking you'd be really smart and you put that $1,500 in the stock market, I'm going to tell you, 
If you or your stockbroker figured out how to double that down in a year, I'll be impressed because I pay a guy who can't do that for me. All right, real estate is the surest way to start getting some residual income. All the MLMs in the world, the Mary Kays, the Tupperwares, the everything else, they try to convince you that if you just invest $100 and you get your first inventory kit, then suddenly you're gonna move up the ranks and you're gonna climb the pyramid and you're gonna start making all sorts of money. That is not true, ladies. Real estate has been around since Jesus walked on this earth and it'll be around until he comes back. And what you need to do is get your slice of the pie. And I'm telling you that it only takes $1,500 to get started. $1,500 is all it takes to get started in real estate investing or less. Yeah, less. I bought a house one time a hundred and twenty two thousand dollar house i put ten dollar check down on it and eight weeks later i walked away with a fifteen thousand dollar check so in eight weeks i made ten dollars grow to fifteen thousand dollars and then three weeks after that i got another check from another deal for eight thousand dollars i would dare any real estate agent across the country to show me that they make between eight and 25 percent commission on every closing because they just don't do it and then they have to split it with the other agent they have to split it with their broker they have to split it with all these fees and fines and all this other stuff that it takes to be a broker and a real estate agent and i know what it takes because i am one but I was born into a real estate investing family and I am going to pump that and put it into your head as much as I can. So let's go back to my $1,500 lot real quick. If you invest $1,500 and a year later you have $3,000, we know that $1,500 bought us a half acre. So if we double it and we have $3,000, we ought to be able to buy a full acre. And if we can rent a half acre for $250, then we could rent the full acre for $500 a month. Now, we have $750 coming at us every month. Let's just say we got the $500 coming at us. It takes another six months before we get our $3,000 back. In a year, we've doubled down our investment again. So two years in a row, we started with $1,500. The next year, we were at $3,000. The next year, we were up to $6,000. And just doing this double down method, let's do it again the third year. We put $6,000 down. We ought to be able to buy, let's see, we did a half acre, one acre. We ought to be able to buy two acres now with $6,000. And we're going to rent it. And since we've been doubling down, we're going to rent it for $1,000 a month. So again, it takes us six months before we have our full investment back. And in a year from then, we have $12,000. But think about what we're bringing in every month. We're getting two fifty dollars off the first half acre. We're getting five hundred dollars off the first acre. And we're getting $1,000 a month for a two-acre lot. We are bringing in $1,750 cash money that we don't have to wake up for, we don't have to clock in for, we don't have to do anything but check our bank account or check our email. And we're bringing in $1,750 a month. So I said at the beginning, what would you do if I gave you $1,500? All right, y'all, what would I do? What would you do if I could give you $1,750 every single month for the rest of your life? Now, you can go on that shopping spree because you know what? Next month, you're going to get it again. Or you could automatically designate that to your marketing expense. If your company doesn't do good during the holidays or something, it's okay. You know you're going to get $1,750 again next month and the next month and the next month. And I'm talking about land, y'all. I'm not talking about having houses and having to save up for roofs and air conditioners and all this other jazz. I'm not talking about that. I can talk about that. If you want to, we could talk about that for hours. In 2015, I flipped six houses and planned my wedding. <laughs> Anybody planned a wedding? A 200 people plus wedding? Yeah. 
I did that and flipped six houses. You know how I could do that? You know why I could do that? It's because I have these portfolios set up so that I know I have money coming in. Every time I flip a house, it's like a $20,000 payday, a $40,000 payday, a $75,000 payday. How many of those do you need before you would quit your job? before you would quit your corporate job, before you would tell your partner that you don't wanna do this hard work anymore, you're gonna be a real estate investor. And I do, y'all. I make 20,000, 30,000, 75,000 at a chunk. I talked to a woman this morning. She told me it was her dream to flip two houses every month and make 60,000, make 30,000 from each house. Well, heck yeah, mine too. But she didn't have a formula. She didn't have a plan. She didn't know how to find properties that weren't listed by agents. And let me tell y'all, agents take all the fun out of real estate. My goal in life is to put the fun back in real estate. And I'm really good at that. <laughs> I've got lots of stories. I've got lots of experiences. I've got lots of energy and I am here and ready to teach you and show you and walk you through the process how you can turn a $10 check into a $15,000 payday. How you can buy a house with no money. None of your credit. Nobody's going to check your credit. If you got bad credit, that's fine. I don't care because we're not gonna go to the banks and get any money. We're not gonna have to go have these fancy meetings with these dudes in these suits and ties. And let me tell you, while I'm talking about dudes in suits and ties, that is who everybody thinks of when they think of a real estate investor. But let me tell y'all that I like to wear a dress every day. I like to be pretty. I like to carry my goyard. I like to wear fancy shoes. I'm just like you are. I'm a woman and I need to make more money. You are a woman who needs to make more money. I've got the system in place to show you how to make more money. I will walk you through the whole process. If you have a little real estate experience or you have no real estate experience, you are perfect for the program that I have. I only accept a couple ladies into this program every month though. So if you're interested and you want to know more about what I have to say and how I can help you, then please go to allaboutrei.com. That's allaboutrei.com and fill out the application on my website. I like smart women who are driven, who are self-motivated, who don't like the no word who don't mind working a little bit to receive thousands of dollars in residual income. And I'm talking about real residual income. I've broken my real estate portfolio into seven companies. And I will tell you that one of my companies makes $10,000 a month. I am a real estate investor. I have enough money coming in for my portfolios that if you join my program, that is awesome. That is good for you. Girl power. Let's do this together. You can knock it out of the park in your part of the country. But if you decide not to join my program, I'm still making a shit ton of money. <laughs> so if you want to be on my level, if you want to know that you're going to wake up on the 5th, the 12th, the 17th of every month and have more money in your account, Join me. Fill out the application on allaboutrei.com. I will review it because I'm only, I'm telling y'all, I'm only taking a select number of ladies into this program. This isn't a one size fits all. On that application, you better tell me why you would be the best fit for my program and how motivated you are. Tell me what kind of experience you have. The website again is allaboutrei.com and I am looking forward to seeing your application come in today. Happy investing.